in a typical software flow that looks something like this with unit level testing on the left hand side maybe doing things like static code analysis or, um, or different levels of code coverage testing and then you deploy out to some non-prod lower environment staging environment where you can run higher level end-to-end -end integration testing and really build out some deeper confidence until you ultimately deploy out to produ production systems and potentially here even including some additional smoke tests out on those production systems and this again has allowed customers to achieve a greater level of confidence in validating the change from whatever source they might be coming from but there's been a consistent area of feedback we've gotten from our customers over time, which is what happens after that deployment. I know my non-prod environment looked good, and I know my production deployment said it looked good, but now we're operating in a real-world scenario that I can never quite mimic perfectly in our non-prod environments. And I want my teams to have the confidence to deploy on a Friday afternoon. That's why CircleCI worked of releases. And so what we actually do in this project is allow you to monitor from your Kubernetes cluster the deployments that are actually happening in that environment. Developers using configuration as code and popular frameworks like Argo rollouts can define exactly what canary or blue-green deployment looks for, like, uh, for them, including what level of analysis is required. We've piped that information over to CircleCI where we display it on the releases dashboard. And we also expose additional capabilities to the application team to manually restore versions, scale components, um, or even kind of promote through releases via Argo rollout as needed. And so let's take a look at what that means in practical application. Um, I've got a sample pipeline here that's much simpler than the other one we were looking at. It only does one thing, it runs a deployment. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and trigger this so that we can quickly look at what it means for an application team. Assuming maybe this is at the end of a long run process of unit level testing, static testing, etc. And we're ready to now go ahead and make sure that these things we're pushing out to our end users is in fact valid and doing what we want it to do. Uh, these steps will take just a minute to run through. What we do, we can go ahead and take a look at the application under test. This is created by the Argo rollouts team. We've modified it slightly for our use cases, but basically what it's gonna show us is what version is responding in this environment. As we see our rollout start to come through here, we can see we're pushing out a new version green here in this name or cluster. The team has defined a stepped rollout. So we're doing a canary rollout, slowly increasing the amount of traffic that goes to each container. And you can actually see that here in the UI, right? Only about 30% of our traffic is going to this green container that we're rolling out. We mentioned everything looked good in non-prod. All of our uh, unit test, integration test, and end test were passing, but we can never quite mimic uh, that production workload. And so what happens actually out in production, once we start communicating with some upstream, downstream systems, or under a particular load that we didn't expect, is this service starts to misbehave. It starts to return an error rate to our customers. And our uh, team has basically defined a condition here of, I don't care what the cause is, but if we're returning an error rate any more than 10% of the time, or we're not successfully returning a response the customer wanted 90% of the time, we consider that a failure of this container. And if it happens more than twice, we consider this rollout a failure. And here's a specific you know, query we used against Prometheus to understand that, but this is a high level condition that we're, we're analyzing for. And so if we go back to our releases over here, sure enough, that's exactly what happened. We got to about, what, almost uh, to 70%. We were just over 50% when Argo rollouts realized this is an invalid release. We're failing our success metric. And so we're gonna go ahead and roll back. And so you can see that happening here where we started to increment the green up and up and up. Argo rollouts kicked in and said, actually, nope, we can't do that. It's a bad version. And we're going exclusively back to this red version. And we zoom back out here, we can actually see that our other regions, the JPAC and EMEA clusters, they're still running and their versions, they're not seeing those errors for whatever reason, i.e. me not mucking with the demo app. And those are gonna proceed just fine. If we want to, we can manually promote individual steps and we can also promote up the entire release. Each one of these I mentioned are going to environments. And so we can also look at, oh shoot, the namer release failed. But what does that mean is out there in namer currently? And so I can actually see all the components out in my particular environment. In this case, I care about this particular component called Istio rollout. And so I can see that this is in fact my red version that's out there. Uh, and I expect to have two replicas of this red version out there. And it's a little hard to see on the screen, but there's some gray font one and two. These are the two indexes of my red service returning uh, traffic here. 
I might decide, you know, the reason that the green service failed, North America just gets a higher load than all the rest of our clusters. So we actually need to, to scale this up. And so we're going to raise it from two instances to four. This is going to put a job on a queue. That agent inside the customer's Kubernetes cluster is going to come and pick up that job and it's going to execute on it and run it inside the environment. And then it's actually going to monitor inside the environment and make sure we get the changes we expect. We'll see that quickly over here in a demo app that going from one and two, we should start to see three and four pop up here as additional nodes come online and begin responding to the workload that we're sending over here. So sure enough, I just saw four, four, three, three, three. So now we've got four nodes running in here. Uh, and this, just a minute, will confirm. There we go. Successfully completed that command. We can also see the entire history of commands, including promotions of releases, scaling components. We can go back to prior versions if we want in the history. Um, so we could go through prior releases and actually say, you know what, the reason this one's failing is because it's just a totally bogus. Red's not going to work either because it's got that bug. So while we figure out green, let's go ahead and you know go back to our safe yellow version here. Um, and we can actually click this. I won't do it, but go ahead and restore back to that prior version. In this case, you know, four four versions prior that was out in that environment. Um, each and sorry, the last thing I'll show you quickly is for any one of these releases that come out here. Not only can we see how it did for its overall release progress, um, where it failed, and control it, scale it up, scale it down, restore it. We can tie it back to the CI side of things, so we can understand exactly what job in our continuous integrated pipeline caused uh, this particular release to run in our environment. So we have that full traceability end to end uh, back to our originating source code repository change or whatever that originating uh, source of change was. I apologize this was a little long, but hopefully it is a useful introduction to Circle CI releases capability, how it extends our CI story into your running environment, staging and production environments to really give your team the full confidence. Not only has that been uh, per appropriately been deployed out to your environment, but you're controlling that release in a way that you can mitigate risk to your customers and increase the confidence of your development team.